Hello, my fellow pin enthusiasts. Aaron here with another pin news video. And uh, I've got some really exciting pins. Just recently, within like literally the last 48 to 72 hours, <clears throat> these pins have been released to the public, so to speak. Uh, they're available, all these pins are available on Etsy. Some of them are available on eBay as well, as well as probably some other sites also. Three out of these four pins, actually I think now four out of the four, are available on one of Bobby's uh, sites. So Bobby Pins, those of you that know, uh, he has an Etsy store, he has an eBay store, and he has a now an uh, AliExpress store as well. So he, he's got you covered on a lot of different fronts. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our first pin. And the first pin that I have I actually have some notes on it as well, is the Lingmo Lorelei fountain pen. Now, I'm gonna post the first image up here, and after I get that posted up, I'll give you some additional information about the pen. But here we see it in two different colors. As you can tell, this is a piston filler fountain pen. We've got it in a clear version, and then we have it in the what we're calling the autumn colorway. And um, so this pen is available with a fine nib, the clear version is retailing for $27 on Bobby's Etsy site, and the autumn version is retailing for $30. Now some additional information about the pen. The overall length of the pen, um, according to the website, is 142 millimeters capped. The pen barrel, probably at its widest point, is around 14 millimeters, and the overall weight of the pen is 22 grams. So decent weight on this pen. Um, I really think that the autumn color is gorgeous. Um, I love the fact that the section, the uh, finial on both the cap and the barrel, of course that turn knob, is all that kind of beautiful gradient color. Now let's move on to our next image with, these, uh, with this pen, and that is going to be uh, the feed. So similar to a lot of wingsung pens that we see that have that really nice clear plastic feed, um, this one has that same type of design, so of course it's going to mimic whatever color ink you're using. We'll notice, or at least I notice, that the nib has an upturn to it. So even though it's a fine nib, probably get a little bit better wine, line width than you would with like a typical fine nib. Um, I love like Delike nibs that have that upturn. Hopefully this one's gonna be like that. I'm not always a huge fan of the Pin BBS nibs with their upturns. I find some of them a little bit dry and a little bit finicky, but um, hopefully this one uh, fits the bill and works well. Um, now we're going to see the next image, we're actually going to see the nib and a little bit better look of it. It's got a lot of different information on it, um, so it looks like we have a date on here. From what I can tell on the date, it's kind of hard to see that last number. It's 1990-something. Um, I don't know what that last uh, digit is, though. Obviously, we have F for fine. We have China. Then it looks like we have some uh, a design that it looks like a chicken. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. It almost looks like a chicken and a duck. If you know more, and it's probably their actual logo, I don't actually personally own a Lingmo pin, so definitely comment down below so I can actually learn something. The nib to me kind of mimics the overall design of a Yovo nib, just as far as the scroll work that it has on it. Um, just kind of looks like one. Obviously, I'm not saying it is one, but it definitely kind of looks like one. Now our next image, is actually gonna be a little bit more of a close-up look of the uh, piston filling mechanisms. So you get a nice look at the, the turn knobs there. You notice that uh, the um, <clears throat> cover to the actual piston itself looks to be metal. Now that could be plastic, it could be just painted plastic. I'm not saying it is, but it could be. Um, but it looks to be metal. Now there is branding on these as well, which you'll see in an upcoming image also. Um, our next image is actually going to be of the caps. So we, of course, have a very nice uh, clear cap liner. So that, I, I think, is a nice design element. Nice wide cap band with some branding on it. The clips are, are very basic, but I have no issue with that whatsoever. I'm not a person that gets stuck on clips very often as far as their overall design. Um, obviously, there are some clips out there that I find a little bit hideous. Um, but for the most part, I don't get uh, worried about what the clip looks like. Now the next image that I have is actually going to be the clear version separate. 
Um, and here we get a nice look. So you'll see in this image what I was referring to as far as the branding on that uh, piston cover. So it looks like we have Lorelei on that actual piston cover. You know, probably gonna have a pretty decent ink capacity with this pen, with it being a piston filler. Um, should be a fairly easy pen to clean out as well. It looks like you've got a lot of threads there to really seal up that, uh, that barrel really nice. So it should be a pretty easy pen to clean out. Uh, most of these type of pins are usually pretty, pretty easy. Now our last image that we have for this pen is the actual autumn color. I like the fact that Bobby puts on this image that each one, each one is different. So, you know, really what that tells me is there's probably going to be different, um, not necessarily different colors, but the actual color itself is going to fluctuate. You may get one that is going to be darker than the than one than another one, just probably based off of where you know on that rod where they've cut the pen and you utilize the pieces to make the pen. Now you'll notice on that section that at the back where the barrel is, that whole section is the same exact material or same color. So of course that whole piece is gonna be that one specific color. So just something I noticed in this image, uh, based off the actual where the pin's located, you don't see the branding on the uh, piston turn down at the bottom, but I'm sure it's there just like it was on the acrylic version. I think the autumn color is really, really pretty. I think. $30 is not a bad price for this pin. All right, so I, I had to break away from the video for a moment. I apologize. Uh, it's what happens when you have uh, family around sometimes. So I had to break away from family for a moment, but we're gonna move on to the next pin in this list, which is uh, another Bobby pin that's available on his Etsy site, and that is the Natami Inception Fountain Pen. Now there is a review of this pen that I will post down in the description. That is not that is a written review with some beautiful images. Uh, for those of you that follow uh, Scrivener, um, there's a really good review. So definitely look at that review if this is a pen that interests you. The first image I'm gonna pop up is gonna show three of, I think the six colors that are available for this pen. So we have a red one, a green one, and a clear one with a nice gold trim. Kind of to me, the trim looks to be a little bit of that rose gold type color, not like a full gold, which I like. Now, of course, some of you may say, wow, that looks like a platinum uh, 3776. And really, when you look at the pin, the overall design element and everything about the pin mimics that pin very well. And I have a platinum 3776 that I'll just kind of show you. And, you know, I mean, you look at that red one that's there. Not identical necessarily, but close, close. I have no issue with that. I mean, you look at the price of this pin, you're getting gold nib, um, but you know, you're looking at $100, $150, depending upon which one you get, versus $20.50 for this pin. That's what it is retailing for. So some additional information on this one. It is being sold with a fine nib. Um, the overall length of it is 142 millimeters cap, so the same size as our Lingmo. The pin barrel is around 13 millimeters, and the overall weight is 25 grams. So there's uh, was a little bit surprised it's actually heavier than the Lingmo with that piston filler, um, but it is heavier, um, so just something to note. And as well as that, if you can't tell in the image, it is a faceted pen. So that is a, a, something else that I think is a really cool design element for this fountain pen. All right, so we will go ahead and pop our second image, which is now uh, giving you a look uh, at the nib. So this is, um, I think it's actually, it, it's a little bit of an understated nib. I actually find the nib to be cool. It doesn't really look like most other nibs that you see. Um, now you've got branding on there, of course. You have F for, for fine. Now you've got a quote on there, the flight of time, which you'll notice is um, on the pin as well on the uh, cap band. And you'll see that here in a moment. So, you know, pretty standard nib. I think it looks fine. I think it looks somewhat attractive. Uh, moving on to the next image. <clears throat> and this is actually going to be, give you a really great close up look of the actual faceted pin itself. So this is that red color. 
You'll notice that the, the um, cap band has that same uh, quote on it as well. Nice wide cap band. And then you'll see the clip definitely has different steps to it as well. So it's a little bit of a similar design to the 3776. However, the 3776 really only has about one step. So a little bit different as well. Um, again, clips are not really that big of a deal to me. I think the faceted design of the pin though is really, really cool. Um, now let's move on to another image and on this one we get to see, um, so we're, we're seeing the top of the uh, cap and you'll notice there's a spring in this image. So for those of you that own a Platinum 3776, you'll know uh, Platinum has that marketed slip and seal technology that they have in their pin. This pin also basically, I guess you could say mimics that same idea. Um, so if you've always wanted to try that or to see, you know, how it feels, how it works, there's other pins out there, I think, that have a similar type design to this, but for 20 bucks, you, you get that. I think it's, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, personally, I think it's cool that you've got that spring loaded inner cap liner to really help seal up that nib. So hopefully you won't have any hard start issues or any drying out of the nib. Now, moving on to the next image we'll get to see that uh, clear version, um, you know, uncapped, really nice look at it. So we've got a black feed on there. Now, obviously this is a, a cartridge converter fountain pen and I can't tell, but I mean, not that it really necessarily matters. I wouldn't be eye dropping this pen, but it looks like we have additional metal down there at the end of the section where the barrel meets. So it's probably not a pen that you can eye dropper. Don't know for sure but it, to me, based off the image, that's what it looks like. This is actually the color that I ordered. I have ordered this pen. I wanted to get the clear one with this really nice rose gold material. Um, I just thought it looked really neat. There are other colors that though are nice, but I, I really wanted to try this one out. So I do have that one on order. Um, moving on to our next image, we actually get kind of the dark blue color here. And you'll notice this one is transparent as well. Now it does have a rhodium trim or just basically silver trim and the nib is silver as well. I'm um, not as transparent as the other colors that you're going to see. So if you don't want a pen that's really that transparent or if you really like to use transparent pens more for eyedropper purposes, um, this might be a good color for you. I think the blue is very attractive. Um, this one was one I was really thinking about possibly getting. Um, and then the next one is actually the green one. And this green one, you'll notice a little bit more transparency. We've got our nice rose gold trim on this one. Same thing for the nib. Um, I think it's a very, very nice green pin. And then we're going to move on to our next one, which is our fourth color. This one's more of a light blue with silver trim, much more transparent than the other one. So again, giving you another option. So if you want kind of a bluish colorway, but you want it more transparent, you'll get that with this one here as well. Now, I've got a couple more images for you. Now, this is gonna be that red one that we saw. So again, you've got your gold trim on this one, and pretty much it's a transparent red pen. Um, very nice looking color. And then our last image is another clear one, but it gives you the option with a silver trim on this one as well. So if you want clear, but you don't want the gold trim, you can go with silver or vice versa. So I think it gives you a lot of different choices with this pin. To me for $20, this is a really cool pin. Um, from what I've seen about the pin, there's a, a lot of, I think, uh, information that it's a, it's a nice pin. It writes well, it, it performs well. So I definitely think that's why I ordered one. And um, of course, once I get it, I'll write with it for a while and then I'll post a review on it. So if you want to wait, I haven't seen it available any place else other than Bobby's site as of yet. Um, not to say that it won't, but um, definitely if you're interested, get one from Bobby. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Again, it's retailing for around $20.50. Obviously, um, add about a dollar shipping for that. So $21.50, but it's a good pen. So our third pin now that we're going to pop up is really a pin that I've talked about in like the last two pin news videos. So this will be our third one. And I'm going to post up on the screen the YouTube subscriber that 
actually kind of put me onto this pen. And this is basically the Wingsung 3013, but it's branded with a different name. But and then it's kind of weird. Some of the sellers have it like, so the name is P-A-I-L-I, -I, which I'm assuming is Pei Li. Hopefully I pronounced that properly. If I didn't, please correct me. And then some of the uh, sellers have it branded as Wingsung, and then in parentheses they have Pei Li or vice versa. But with that, either way, it's basically the Wingsung 3013, but it's in two different colors. So we know we've already had it released in the clear, the brown, and the purple. Well, now we have a blue and we have a green. So the first image I'm popping up here is the blue version. I actually have already ordered this pin. Really excited, can't wait to get it. So this is retailing for around nine to $10 as well, $12 in some sites. Now, Bobby actually has this available. He just got it posted, I think, a couple days ago on his Etsy site for $9.90, and it comes with a medium nib. Um, a lot of the other sellers are selling it with fine nibs. So if you want a medium nib, go to Bobby's site. Now, as far as some additional information on the pin, um, it's about 140 millimeters uh, capped, 13 millimeters on the barrel, and then 20 grams. So a little bit on the lighter side for a vacuum pin, so that makes me think, you know, it's gonna be kind of similar to the 268 as far as uh, maybe some of the fill and just the overall weight of the pin, not as much like the 456, um, but I don't have any issue with that whatsoever. So um, really like this blue one though. Um, let's pop up some other images. Now this one is again, kind of another marketing image. So I think it's just kind of showing us what the nib's gonna look like, the section, everything to me looks exactly the same as the other wing songs we've seen. And then of course, it's got that pilot uh, feed and it looks like type nib and it's a clear feed. So again, really cool because it's gonna mimic whatever color ink that you use. Now for our next image, this one's just showing the blue pin again and it's showing it in an un uncapped form, the piston rod, pulled out and then it's showing you what that cap looks like. Really nice wide cap band, uh, nice clip. Uh, looks like it's gonna be a really good functional clip. Um, so there you see the blue one again. And then we will post up what the green one looks like. This is the only green uh, image that I have, but here you see the nice transparent green one. So if you're a big, huge fan of green and you're upset that they didn't release a green one and that initial launch, well, now you have the option. Now I have seen this available on eBay as well as Etsy. So you have both of those options. Shop around, get a good price. And if you want that medium nib though, go to Bobby's Etsy site because that's the only place I've seen the medium nib available. And then I'll pop up one last image. And again, this is just the blue one, just to give you one last image of that one also. So really exciting. Um, I, I'm excited that they are releasing some additional colors with this pin. I think it's interesting that it has a different brand name. I don't know how all that's gonna work. Now, of course, I did order one of the initial, when Bobby launched his Wingsung 3013, um, I got that one ordered like, that day, so I have that one coming and then I have one of these coming. So I'll compare the two and just see if there is any difference whatsoever. Um, clearly there will be a difference with the nib because Bobby had those with that, um, a different nib on them. But I mean, outside of that, I don't really see any differences in the images, but I still think it's cool they did that. All right, for our fourth and final pin, this is gonna be a Moon Man pin. Um, I just saw this pin right before I started doing the videos. So we all know that Moon Man launched the C1 fountain pen. A lot of people rave about that pen. I happen to be one of them. Well, now Moon Man has already launched the Moon Man C2. So we have a Moon Man C2, and I'm gonna pop the first image up here for you. And it is available in four different colors. We have a clear one, a purple one, which is kind of a violet color, a clear blue one, and a clear red one. Now with the C2, this is, I've noticed it's already available on several different sellers. And I think Bobby just posted this on his Etsy site, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like it's gonna be retailing for anywhere between about 15 on the low end to $20. Most sites I've seen it for around 17 to 20. Now, as far as dimensions and weights, it's 129 millimeters cap, so a little bit smaller. Um, and the diameter is around 15 millimeters, so nice width, which you can kind of tell in the images, it's a little bit girthy at its widest points. 
and then the um, weight of it is only 13.6 grams, but there's really no metal on the pen other than the nib. So it's definitely gonna be on the lighter side. Once you put a little bit of ink in it, it'll get a little bit heavier, but it's not gonna be a heavy pen by any means. Now, you'll notice this is, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say a downgraded version of the C1, but it's to me a little bit more, I don't know, it's a different version. Um, now, some things to note. So here in our second image, we're gonna see the pin uncapped. So here we see the sections. I like that section design because it's got that nice concave uh, section right in the middle, that hourglass shaped section. Those are some of my favorite sections to use. I think the barrel's interesting how it has those ridges in it, a um, little bit different design element. The other thing I've noticed with this pin is that the threads for the cap and the section are actually at the end of the section. So similar to what you would see on like a Franklin Kristoff pin or um, the pin BBS 323, the metal versions of those, the, it looks like the, the, the threads are at that point. So some people may like that. You may not like that if you hold all the way down to the end of the section. It does look like they're a little bit more of a block style thread. So it hopefully will be a pin that doesn't take a lot of turns to uncap and recap. Um, as well as the threads won't be very sharp. So, and it also doesn't look like there's a big step down from the barrel to the section. So that's another nice thing that I, I like about the pin, just looking at it. Now moving on to another pin, or another image, I'm sorry, is we see the packaging. So the packaging to me, it looks exactly the same as what we saw on our C1 with the exception that the package is a different color. Now it does come with the typical Moonman uh, ink syringe, which I think is nice. Of course, in this image, we get a nice look at that blue pin. So um, I really like Moonman's new packaging, and here we get to see another different iteration of it, so to speak. Now this next image is the red one. I really like this red color. Um, it kind of pops. I think this image does it justice, kind of gives you that idea that it's that candy apple red. Um, it looks a little bit with that ink in it, it almost looks like a, a, a Jolly Rancher, so to speak. Um, now, one thing I haven't talked about is the nib. The nib definitely um, mimics a number five Moonman nib, which what we would see on a Moonman S1 or the Moonman N3. Um, I'm sure it's the exact same design. Now, it will be interesting to know if it's a screw-in nib unit or if it's just a regular friction fit um, unit that goes in there similar to what we'd see on like the Moonman M2. Now if it is that same exact nib that we've seen on the N3, I really like that nib. I think it works and performs well. Um, I know there's sometimes some people that like the nib, some people don't. I happen to be one that likes them so I wouldn't have any issue as far as that goes. Now our next image here, we get to see the blue one in its uncapped form. This is really the image that kind of shows, showed me the threads initially and made me realize that this was a pin that um, the threads were at the end. Cause at first, when I first looked at it, I almost thought it was just a you know, snap cap. It wasn't one that you were gonna twist on and off, which I thought was a little different and an interesting design, but it is one that's still unique or more unique, so to speak, that you, but you are, it's still a twist twist off cap. So um, now our next image that we have here is, uh, oh, my computer's acting crazy. This will be our last image. And this is really just showing all four pins with the boxes. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what all that looks together. And just one last marketing image for you. So I have not ordered one of these pins yet. I'm probably gonna hold off. Um, I haven't, I, I, I gotta decide if I wanna order one of these or the Lingmo pen. I'm really leaning towards that Lingmo pen. I really love that autumn color and I don't know how many of those uh, Bobby has available. But, and I know the Moonman C2 will probably be available for quite a while, but I do think it's a cool looking pen. Now, even though these are, these are offered in fine nibs, I have seen a couple comments here and there that there are maybe gonna be offered in medium nibs. I could be wrong. Um, I would just anticipate fine nibs for these for the most part um, throughout. Obviously, on any of these pins, the changing out the nibs are not usually very difficult. But, you know, all that being said, I think it's a cool pin. Um, do, am I as crazed about this pin as I was the C1? No. 
Um, but I do think it's nice that Moon Man is just continuing to really try and offer different design elements, different colors, and, and all sorts of different stuff. Well, that is all I have, guys. Um, I don't really have any um, pin mail to show you because I've, I've got a lot of pins on order, but none of them have shown up yet. Uh, they And... Um, once those show up, I'll, I'll show those to you. Uh, over the next couple of days, I will have the Moon Man M600S pin review finished. I've already started it. I just got to get it finished. I just wanted to get this video out first because I'm, I'm really excited about all these different pins. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, everyone, please take care out there. I will see you later. Bye-bye.